David it. Masterton, pissed off. <laughs> I do. <dare> you. Leave it. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Remind podcast. You are joining myself, Dr. Ashley Morland, and my co-host, David Masterton. Today in episode nine, we are going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, and it is setting boundaries. So Dave and I were just chatting offline about this, and it is just such an important topic and something that is close to both of our hearts. I think every single human being on the planet can relate to this. They've either experienced a boundary being set or not set or been guilty themselves of not setting a boundary, which then goes on to have an impact on themselves. So before we jump into our content for today, how are you going, Dave? Yeah, um, this, this topic is so relevant to me right now. So in today's episode, you'll see on YouTube today on Borderline Dave. (laughs) Um, It's just so relevant going through a lot of things at the moment around boundaries and the healthy versus toxic boundaries, passive versus assertive. Um, So I'm very happy to discuss this and just share what I'm going through at the moment because it's just so relevant. Yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm right there with you because this is something that just is part of our everyday life. Like, it, it, I also want to step back just for a second and say everything that we've covered up until this point is so relevant to this because a boundary requires us to know self. So right back episode two, there's an element of identity. If I don't know where I start and I end, I can't set a boundary around that. It'd be like, you know, trying to set a boundary at the cricket oval, but not knowing where the cricket oval stops and starts. You could go and set set a boundary line, you know, right next to the pitch, but that's not going to be a very helpful, um, effective boundary line, is it? Mm. So unless I know where I start and I end, I can't set a healthy boundary. I can't set an effective boundary. So self is super important. And then we talked about self-awareness. So self-awareness was only super recent. We talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. And I think it was last week. And self-awareness is really about going, well, I need to be able to observe what's going on in me. Because if I don't know my needs, if I don't know what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, what I'm needing in this moment, then how can I possibly communicate that to someone else? So self-awareness becomes massively important because if we don't have the self-awareness established, we're just going to be setting boundaries through reactivity. Like, F off! No. So (laughs) easy though, isn't it? (laughs) Big reactive boundaries. None of those boundaries are very effective. A good F off or get out of here or get out of my face. mm, Yeah. Torture, burn it down. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And I think you raise an important point with it when it comes to self awareness. You gotta be aware or try and be aware or curious as to where your boundaries are. And then try and understand if other people, are they aware of what they're doing? Are they aware of what, of, of how they are reacting and what they're doing? How's it affecting you? And that sort of self-awareness. And I suppose then if you come at two people who may not be aware or, you know, one that's aware and the one isn't, whichever way it sort of is not right or wrong, just the way it is. That's when boundaries are really important. And I think we're talking just before we started the episode, the difference between 
having the intention of setting a boundary versus actually doing it. Mm. Setting a boundary and being passive about it, which I'm going to put my hand up here. Um, I can be accused of doing that. I usually flow between these two states of setting a boundary, burn everything down boundary and passive boundary, right? <laughs> and a passive it's, boundary is another term for a lack of boundary. Ex ex exactly. <laughs> Until I get to the point where I'm going to burn everything down. Like, thank yes. you very much. Thanks for coming. <laughs> so it's Welcome. like a closed loop, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So it's learning yeah. the nuances of being able to sort of say, you know what, um, this is a boundary. And then being able to actively and assertively do it without shame or guilt, which is which is difficult, especially yeah. when sometimes boundaries have to be set with people or in circumstances where you're being challenged. Is what you are doing or the boundary you're setting the right thing to do? Yes. Uh, and, and I think that's such an important point because right is subjective. What's right for me might not look right for you. It might not feel right for you. But in order for me to do what you think is right, it means I have to abandon my my sense of right. And so it's, um, have you ever seen the image where there's a number in the middle of two people standing opposite sides of it? And for one person, the number looks like a six and the other person, it looks like a nine. That says the, the concept uh, of it yeah. is it's just showing it's one number. Everyone can agree, agree there's only one number on the inside of it, but <clears throat> two people are seeing two completely different numbers and right is really subjective like that. Same as good. What's good? What's good for you is different to what's good for me, right? Uh, but, so, if you, so if you take that analogy further, by the way, because this analogy has got two people right? One V one, if we have to yeah. talk about this. Now you put 10 people on one side and there's mm. one person on the other side. Yes. Now, I've in, never in, thought about it like that. Now in society's point of view, absolutely you are wrong because I can confirm it with all the people standing over here yes. beside me. I've got this confirmation bias. Absolutely. And so you on the other side, no, you're not right. And um, then suddenly, but you, you, as you're saying, you inside, you're sort of going, but I see what I'm seeing. I know what I'm seeing, but it mm -hmm. always challenges you to sort of go, am I missing something? Is there something yeah. else going on? Is there a lesson yep. here? I want to stay curious, but geez, you know, at what point do you sort of go, holy moly? Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's so powerful. I've never really thought about it like that, but that's really what it feels like, isn't it? It's because we, we, I love the, the concept of misery loves company. And I can mm. relate this back to my own life in times where, um, let's say, for example, in my first marriage where I didn't know how to have a healthy relationship yet. And I married someone who also didn't know how to have a healthy relationship. And so our, our relationship was, you guessed it, unhealthy. And so I found that when I was looking at our relationship and the, and the goings on within our relationship from my perspective, I would want to gather my troops. And by gather my troops, I mean, I would like call in all the girlfriends who would always jump on my bandwagon, see things through my perspective and support me. But support looked like validating me. Like, yeah, what an asshole. Yeah, he shouldn't have done that. Oh, you deserve so much more. But mm. that concept of misery loves company because in the perspective that you just gave of imagine being solo on your side where you can clearly see it is what it is, but then 10 other people on the other side seeing it from there and how alienating and um, confusing that, that can be. And I definitely can relate to that because I've always, I've never been one to follow the crowd. I've always been quite a, a free thinker and, um, and you mentioned, I don't know if it was on air or off air, but you mentioned in, intuitive. And I am very connected. I, I get a lot of promptings and I get a lot of things where sometimes I go, really? But that doesn't make sense. Even from my own perspective, my own human perspective of what I can mm. see, I can only see through the limited lens of my knowledge of past and prediction of the future but I'm getting a very clear prompting. I can feel with every cell of my body that that's truth and I need to follow that. And I used to abandon that to follow my own understanding. Mm. But 
when we follow our own earthly worldly understanding which is influenced by our our desire to please others our desire to be accepted and and connect with other people our desire to be um good <laughs> or mm, to be mm. right in order to follow that we have to abandon ourselves we have to abandon that prompting and that that full body knowing of truth so there's like this oh, this tension and this this um, disconnect between what we feel is true and right for us versus what everyone else thinks is right for us and the influence of all of that. And here's, and here's the thing. So what I'm going through right now is I genuinely put myself in the bucket of I know what I want and I go for it. And, you know, if my intuition tells me something, I go and do it. But lately, lately, it has been almost felt like it's been my intuition's telling me one thing but then sort of something borderline i don't have that clear direction at the moment mm. you know there's that sort of pull and push against is this you know my intuition saying that but is am i being is that coming from a fact of i'm being triggered i'm yeah. trying to remain curious mm. and so knowing where it is at the moment that it's sort of like okay got all these people telling me that I should be doing this and my intuition saying I should be doing that and even people that you still feel very trusted that are you know looking at the number from your side suddenly you don't feel like they're there anymore mm -hmm. and then you're sort of like oh okay and then it sort of starts to oh am I really not seeing it right and so I am guess I'm, I'm speaking to people out there they're sort of like when it's when you got a clear yes and no for me, it's easy. It doesn't matter how hard the decision is. If I find that inner peace, which I know I'm following my intuition, no matter how hard the decision is, I'm there. I'm golden. It's fine. It doesn't matter how chaotic it is outside, as long as it's inside. When I can't find that within me, which I've been getting a little bit of that recently, or it hasn't been as black and white, I should say. I still kind of know what, what it is. That's kind of the difficult part. And so... For me personally, and sort of recently, it's having to go through, okay, I understand what it is that people are asking of me. Mm -hmm. If my intuition was aligned with that, there wouldn't be a problem, number yeah. one, okay? And this is where it's sort of, you know, you sort of fall back to, okay? If it's all aligned, then we're good because at the end of the day, if that's the case, it's an easy decision. Now, the intuition saying you got to go this way, which is opposite to that. And then what I found, and probably some of the listeners listening are going to be very similar to this, it's this damn cycle you go through. You feel good about the decision. You feel bad about the decision and good and bad and good and bad. And yes and no, and but it's like a merry-go-round. Mm. And, um, and that's kind of the challenging, frightening, confusing, and just tortured state that I think people find themselves in. And for me personally, it, it came down to, and look, I, I, as I said at the top of the show, I have the ability to be incredibly passive and I'm not going to worry about it through to I'll just burn the place down. Right? I have no problem being both. I'm not saying this is a good thing. This is just the, the, the way it is. But when, when you get to that point where you just don't know which way to go, that's the hard bit. So for me, it was about every time I go into a state of I'm done with this, my patience has been tested, I've tried, out comes the the accelerant outcomes of matches we're mm -hmm. going we're going full at the time it feels really empowering yeah. i was gonna say powerful yeah it feels really liberating it feels like if you want to if you if you want to come at come at me or come at my values as a person i think which is under attack not me personally but my values as a person and integrity you're going to get the pointy end of the stick however in after that moment has gone and then everything's washed away 
the decision to do it, I still believe, or the, the, the decision to say I'm not going to fold or I'm not going to do that is still correct. But how I did it, mm. there's always regret. 100%. And, 100%. And, the, and you said something about dopamine, which sort of then makes me sort of go, oh, okay, so that's why I'm doing it. Yeah, there's always a chemical to support the decisions that we're making or to drive the decisions that we're making. And there's think, so many especially things. Especially you were saying before that when you get into that sort of, I'll say the, the grandiose David that wants to really stand on his soapbox and, you know, torture self -righteous. everything. Self-righteous. Self-righteous. You get a yeah. dopamine hit from it, which I never really comprehended. Well, there's also serotonin in that as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's really me, interesting. So you're telling me this is a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's a. I'm not saying it's a healthy thing. Let's ditch the word "good." I'm not saying it's a healthy thing, but I'm saying that you're getting off on it. Oh, Biochemically, no. you're getting yep. off on it, <laughs> which but, is so messed up. So there's a few things that um, come up for me, and I love the conversation that we're having. One of the things that really, so I think I mentioned previously that my spiritual frame of reference through my own, like a whole heap of experiences. And maybe maybe eventually there might be a, a deeper conversation on just this. But my spiritual frame of reference, I would say, is spiritual Christian or Christian because I think the religious aspect of Christianity is uh, has hurt a lot of people. But mm. when we can understand the teachings of Christ from a spiritual perspective, it has completely transformed my life. And there's something that is super relevant to this conversation, which is Proverbs um, chapter three, verses five to six, where it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make, your, make straight your paths. And the reason that that comes up for me in this, this is my constant reminder, because that's, the, that's that tug of war. When I try and lean on my understanding, when I try and as me as a person in social constructs and in family units and in workplaces and, you intellect. know, there is an intellect, Knowledge, in yeah. cognition. Yeah. Because sometimes, like, and I'll give you an example. So we're talking about intuition earlier and the one thing that has really transformed for me is to me, through my frame of reference, intuition is promptings from the Holy Spirit. And I'll give you an example. Like I uh, had been made redundant or no, I hadn't even been made redundant yet, but um, we would, we'd just been told that they were ending the program that I was teaching into. And another university where I did almost all of my study, I did my PhD there. I still had colleagues there that I was still friends with. There were two jobs that came up at that time. And everyone around me, like, Everyone in my circle was sending me the job ads saying, you should definitely apply for this. You'll definitely get one. And in my own worldly understanding, I was like, yeah, I should definitely apply for those jobs. I'll, I'll definitely get one. And the prompting of the Holy Spirit said to me, whatever you do, do not apply because you'll definitely get one. And I'm like, what? Isn't that the point? <laughs> Isn't it? I just found out I'm not going to have a job in two years. Isn't that mm. kind of the point? And it, there was this complete mismatch. Mm. But I chose, I, I learned a few years ago to always be obedient to the promptings because mm. even if I don't understand, there is a path that is right for me, which might not make sense to me even at the time or might completely deviate from what others think is right or others through their perception or understanding is is thinking oh you should or shouldn't be doing that but mm. if if you're getting though if you're getting that prompting if you're getting that intuition and your whole body says yes or your whole body says no even if it doesn't make sense in the natural even if it completely defies logic and reasoning trust the prompting mm. it'll always always pay off and so I guess the relevance that this has to um, setting boundaries, I'm going to steer the ship back to setting boundaries, is that when we have that disconnect, when we have that um, mismatch between what through our own understanding would make sense but versus what our prompting is and what we know in our sense of self is right for us or not right for us, 
setting a boundary is being able to have the capacity and the skill set, the words to use in what order, to be able to set that standard of going, I'm choosing me. I'm choosing what's right for me. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. For a while. Who, when or where in your life did you ever see healthy communication of boundaries modelled to you ever? Modelled to me mm. ever. Particularly growing up. Well, no, I've never seen it. It's something that... Um, I haven't seen it. Okay. There's your answer. That, there, now, there, I think there it is. I must have asked hundreds, if not thousands of people that question, and pretty much everyone has said the same answer. So here's the thing. If I said to you, hey, Dave, could you please insert all these references into EndNote for me? Right. Can you? Just easy. Just got to insert the references into EndNote. Just go do it. Sure. Do you know what EndNote is? Do you know how to use EndNote? Do you know what I even mean? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This is my point, right? So it's, it, it, it frustrates me. Well, I'm not entirely right. sure you've nailed the point there. No, it's sort of I'm like, okay. to the point. I'm okay, making right. my point. I promise. Right. So how could you possibly, it's very easy for you to sit there and go, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I'll, I'll do that I'll for you, Ash. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. But if you've never, if you don't even know what EndNote is, if you don't know how to do it, you've never seen it used before, there's no tutorial, there's no user's guide. How could you possibly know how to do it? You couldn't. And so when I ask people this question of, oh, so tell me about all the healthy boundaries you've ever observed. And they sit there and they're like, what? I've never mm. observed one. And you go, oh, so the problem is that you don't know how to do it. You don't know what words to use and what order. Should you be sitting? Should you be standing? Should you do it face to face? Should it be over the phone or via text? Should it be online? <laughs> how do we set boundaries? And how does that fit within the social, the social construct of being a good or nice person? Yes, being the good boy or the good girl. And so, mm. oh my gosh, we are going deep. Now, if we don't know how to set boundaries, you know, one of the most powerful things I will do with clients is, first of all, I'll let them establish that they are empowered so that they feel empowered to make a decision. But then I'll ask them, now, do you actually know how to do that? So, for example, someone just said, oh, I need to ask for help. Mm. Go, okay, that's that's amazing. How different will your life be once you can ask for help? And they'll go, oh, my gosh, my life will completely change. They'll go, amazing. So how do you ask for help? And then they're like, oh, shit, I don't know. <laughs> don't know how. And so then I'll, like, role play and say, okay, so I imagine you, your phone's gone flat and you just need to know how to get to the train station and there's someone over there and, and you just want to ask them how to, for help. And I'll play the person. Mm. And they'll come and ask me for help and they've got no idea what words to use. They've, they'll stumble over it. They've got no idea how to do it. Boundaries is exactly the same. So if you had some scripts of what healthy boundaries might look like, if you had a sense of what that feels like in your body to know what you want, to know what right is for you, independent of mm. what everyone else was thinking or doing, to know what felt like truth and peace for you and then had the words around it to be able to communicate that to someone else, does that feel mm. empowering? Yeah, it does. It still feels a bit frightening because as you sort of said before, just because you conceptually understand something, the way we learned as kids wasn't, we didn't sort of just, we weren't born and a book was put in front of us, giving us conceptual ideas. We learned from mimicking, from mimicking. modeling, right? Yeah. And so now we're having to be put into a position where it's sort of like, okay, we're starting to become aware of 
generational patterning. We're starting to become aware mm. of wounding. We're starting to become aware of triggering. We're starting to become more aware of the nervous system and trauma. So these are the concepts that probably my parents and my parents' parents and back then there may have been very little awareness around that. So we're now having to step into something that they couldn't model for us because they were never made aware of it. And 100%. This and is so, the elevation of consciousness. That's it. That's it's it. It's the elevation of consciousness and it excites me. Mm. When you have a conscious workplace, when you have a conscious school, when you have a conscious relationship or consciously parent relation, like our whole future and our whole society will be transformed. And I'll give you an example. Like um, if we if we are not doing it consciously, it means we're doing it unconsciously. And unconsciously mm. is reactive. Reactivity is almost never going to end well. It leads to hurt feelings. It leads to assumptions. It leads to miscommunication. It leads to triggering. But when we can have the same outcome but achieve it consciously, it completely changes the situation. So I'll give you an example. So let's say, um, mm, let's use a finance example because I've I've got one in fresh in my mind. So let's say that a person is constantly lending money to a family member or a friend. And as a result of always lending money and bailing that person out, they get themselves into a spot of financial bother. So because they're struggling financially, they then start to feel resentment and frustration and anger, right? But with a healthy boundary, the person is able to set a limit, set a boundary on the financial assistance they're able to provide simply because of their own self-awareness and their own circumstance and, um, like I guess, self-responsibility. So they can prioritise their own financial well-being but still be able to support that person in a different yet healthy way. Mm. And in that and circumstance... I, and I even think in that circumstance, sorry to jump in, even if you don't have financial problems, all right, and you've got lots of money and it's not really an issue, that this is still relevant. Um, Absolutely. Because, because as, it's a as, difference as, between empowering versus enabling. And one thing that came to me as, as you were talking, it's like where, when and where do you need to set a boundary? Mm -hmm. and, and for me, it, it, it came to me that it was sort of like when something is over, right? You're either over giving or you're over receiving something, right? And these examples are just like you said, you're over giving, right? And how do you know if you're over giving? Well, you will know because it's not just coming from the, the natural feeling of I feel great doing this. Yes, it right? usually is with conditions and leads to resentment or frustration. Or just that feeling of I have to or even obligation. Yep. I have to because no one else is. Yep. And then over receiving, well, you have to set a boundary because someone's giving too much to you, right? Either time, attention, focus, or these things are like, okay, that was great, but this is maybe a, a bit too much, right? Mm -hmm. I'm receiving too much of your focus. And again, all of this can be positive or the negative, yeah. right? Someone's overly focused on telling you it's not enough. You, you need to do this. You need to do, 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 right? That's what I'm saying, this kind of over-receiving. When you can sort of take it as constructive feedback or what, what, whatever it is, you know, that's fine because none of us are perfect and we're all evolving. But when it's consistent, repetitive, ongoing, I'm thinking just, you know, when people sort of think when do they need to set a boundary, it's not just because I don't like the look of that person. Well, I'm setting a boundary with you. Or if, or if it's, you know, someone's trying to help you and you feel triggered and immediately you need to set a boundary, mm -hmm. right? These are like the, the toxic ways of setting boundaries versus the, the healthy way of setting boundaries was really in a loose way why I sort of interrupted you. I do apologize. Um, to try and get when and how do we do it without sort of just going, anything I don't like, you look at me funny, boundary. You're not agreeing with me, boundary, <laughs> you know. 
um, where people are using spiritual terms or conscious terms to basically hide or mask the fact that they're just being triggered. So I just wanted yeah. to explore that just a little bit more. A hundred percent, yes. A hundred percent, I completely relate to what you're saying. And I think um, where I was kind of going with it is that feeling of resentment or that feeling of jealousy or frustration or hurt or anger, it's very misdirected. And this is where self-loathing can really come in because the person we will direct the anger and the frustration and the resentment towards the person who's taking from us. But the only reason they've been able to take from us is because of our lack of boundary in the first place. People can't take from us what we don't give. And so if we are able to establish the boundaries, so for example, um, when we talk about scripting, I'll give you some examples. If we, if someone was in a workplace situation where they were just getting absolutely swamped, everyone was throwing tasks, always asking them to do things, well, if I had no boundary, I would just continue to say yes, continue to say yes, continue to take on more tasks and continue to allow other people to dump on me. But with a healthy boundary, I might say, hey, thank you so much for thinking of me. I'm really swamped right now with the work that I have to do and I'm going to choose to prioritise my tasks and I'm not taking anything else on at the moment. But ask me again in the future if you still need help. I'm more than happy to help. Mm. Right now I, I need to prioritise this, you know. Um, something that we've really worked on in our relationship, my, my relationship with my husband is being able to communicate our boundaries around the capacity that we have. So for instance, it might be, um, I'm thinking back to when we were dating, there were times when my husband really needs a lot of time to decompress and really needs his own space. So he would come home from work and my kids would be all over him from the second he walked in the door. They just wanted to be around him. And so before learning this language and learning how to express this, he would just completely, he would tolerate it and tolerate it and tolerate it and bear it until he couldn't tolerate it anymore and then he'd snap, uh, hmm. right? And so this was the cycle that we're talking about. So then I was able to say to him, it's okay for you to have a need. It's okay for you to actually need that space to decompress when you get home. It's not okay for you to, to not communicate anything and then snap at us. So what he ended up doing was actually being able to put language around that, being I'm feeling and I need. So I'm feeling really overwhelmed and I just need some space. Or I really want to hear about your day. And th this is actually a real life thing that just happened um, this week. I was cooking dinner. The kids were trying to share stories. I was in the middle of telling him a story and he's just gone, I really want to hear what you've got to say, but right now there's so much going on and I can't give you the best me to hear you mm. properly. Can yes. we come back to this conversation? And it didn't trigger me. It didn't hurt me. It didn't make me feel unloved or unwanted or unheard, but he, can, he set a boundary. He's gone, the way that this is going down is beyond, it's exceeding my capacity to take in this information and I actually want to be present with you while we're communicating. So can we park it, come back at another time? Old him, now that he's done a lot of work, he's been really committed to this, old him would have just let it keep going, let me talking, being interrupted, this happening, that happening, until the point where he explodes. And then because he's exploded, I then get activated and going, what did I do wrong? Yeah. And yeah. I feel triggered by him, his explosion. And so a boundary is for both people. A boundary honours the other person and it honours us. Mm. If it's a healthy boundary. Yes. Uh, As opposed to what we talked about before. Unhealthy yes. boundaries. Yes. <laughs> Being passive, exactly. which is actually not a boundary. It's the intent yeah. of wanting to have a boundary without actually, without the substance of the action behind it. Because it, it is, it, and I've been realizing this sort of recently, that sort of like, I don't want to be, 
you know, it's, it's, a, it's about confrontation almost, right? Because when you're sort of putting a boundary up in an unhealed environment, it's confrontation. Yeah. Right? It's going to be seen as you're not tolerating, you're not accepting, you're selfish, mm-hmm. you're, you know, all of these things yeah. because... It's a threat. And, it's and a threat. To yeah, the it's a threat, beautiful, beautifully put. It's, it's really a threat. And so, um, and I've seen myself do it and it's sort of like, and I've, the, the times I have been passive about it and it's becoming less and less is because I simply don't want to engage in the argument, not because I won't win it or I am necessarily afraid of being wrong. It's just, I couldn't be bothered putting my resources into it, mm-hmm. which is really strange because it's still, it, you know, by not putting my resources in to have to engage in to try and convince someone, because I, I suppose at that point in time, because I haven't presented the boundary, I've already known in my head, and when I say known, I'm putting this in inverted commas because I don't know everything, right? But I've played it out in my head. I'm going to say this, you're going to say that, yeah. I've decided in my I've decided you're a prediction mind, machine. Yep. You're going to sound stupid. I'm not going to want to have the capacity to try and tell you that you're stupid. And then it's sort of like, this is going to be all for naught. So I'll just sort of shut down and just let you go away. Right. So it's almost in that, in that instance, I've lost respect to even be around you, mm-hmm. which I'm looking, I thought was a fairly sensitive or nice way to do it. However, boy, am I wrong. Yeah. because I'm making so, assumptions. Can I interrupt for one sec? Do you Did you feel like it was a sensitive and nice way to do it because you were avoiding the discomfort of that immediate No, it was sensitive. I mind. was being sensitive for, for me, holding back my resources, not necessarily okay. to them. Right. Because at, at, at that point, I don't necessarily care what comes out of your mouth, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like we're getting to know Dave real well. <laughs> it's sort of like I've been saying this recently. It's like a bee trying to convince a fly that honey is better than crap, right? Mm. So it's sort of like there's no boundary, but because I don't put the boundary, it keeps on going, keeps on going, keeps on going, and I'm just hoping it just sort of, you know dissolves if I just don't put air into it. But in the in the instance that it doesn't then you have to set a boundary. But by, by that time, I've actually used up so much of my patience, a bit like your husband. There's been instances in the past where I've just gone and torched the place, metaphorically yeah. speaking, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and so that's that's probably where I've come at it from more of a passive, because I can argue to, you know, some people will even say, I like to use arguing as a sport. Or debating mm. as a sport but it's um for what purpose though like and this is where we i work a lot with couples mm. and this is something that i really love is that realization of what award do you win for being right well it's it you never do there's like, nothing it, it, there is absolutely no. nothing good there's no prize for being right but the prize for surrendering and accepting is peace. And surrendering mm-hmm. is such a big thing because the, the reality is a lot of the time, generally speaking, now relationship is interesting to me because we always think of relationship with people, but it's not just that. We have relationships with objects. I have a relationship with my mobile phone. The way in which I relate to and with my mobile phone, how much I use it, when I use it, why I use it, what I use it for, that is a relationship. Mm -hmm. I have a relationship with drinking water. I have a relationship with food. I have a relationship with productivity. And boundaries are not just for people. Boundaries are important in all relationships. I have a relationship with clients and how I set boundaries around communication and things like this. If I was, if I just allowed an absolute free for all and said, oh, anyone contact me anytime, here's my mobile number, anytime, day or night, you ring me. Oh, 
imagine how awful that would be because then I would end up resenting the people who just constantly took me away from my life. I've got kids. I've got these other responsibilities. And so boundaries are a way for other people around us to have almost like a term of an agreement. This is this is how we communicate. This is how we operate. This is how we do things around here. So mm-hmm. most likely the, the unwritten ground rule sort of concept. And so I'll use that language a fair bit. So with my kids, for instance, in our home, this is how I'll say it, in our home, we don't say things we don't mean and we don't say mean things. We speak kindly. In our home, we blah, blah, blah. And by having that in our home, that is the boundary because I co-parent and we've actually got some plans to go deep into this in in upcoming episodes, but I co-parent and that's really hard to uphold boundaries when my children are going between two homes. The rules at their dad's house is different to what is it to what it is at our house. The expectations, the what's okay and what's not. Mm-hmm. And so I have to uphold boundaries within my home so that my children know where they stand here. There is actually a real sense of safety that comes into relationships when there are very clearly established boundaries that are upheld. It's not okay to set a boundary and say this is what I'm, this is my boundary, but then not upholding it because it sends a mixed message. Mm, Absolutely. Absolutely. So I guess what you're saying with all of that, and yeah, when we sort of talked about the, you know, this topic, which is about setting boundaries, a lot of people will be thinking immediately, we're talking about relationships here. Yeah. And but but more more importantly, relationships with people at work, at home, friends, family, colleagues, all of that. And I guess what you're sort of saying is boundaries isn't necessarily there to just cut things out that you don't like. Mm. Right? That can be an unhealed version of trying to use a boundary, right? If someone yeah. says, I'm setting a boundary with them, which means I'm never talking to them again. Well, that's a form of boundary, but it's a very blunt force boundary. It's a low, I would suggest that it's a low vibrational frequency boundary. It's a boundary that's stemming from fear or hurt or pain. And so when we think about the frequency of emotion, higher frequency emotions are love and peace and joy. And so if I'm setting a boundary, I want that boundary to be set from a place of love and honor for for each person. Now, there's two options that can happen. When I set that boundary from a place of love instead of a place of hurt or fear, someone, the other person on, on the receiving end of the boundary will either step up and rise to match it or they fall away. And so sometimes the natural consequence of boundaries is that people do leave our lives and we don't have relationship Mm. with them ever again. And that's okay because we are still safe and we still have our boundary. We still have that integrity. But sometimes people rise to match. People will rise to meet that boundary, in which case now you have a more highly conscious, more deeply connected, respectful and loving relationship where you haven't had to abandon self and haven't had to cut them off because the boundary was established from a place of love instead of a place of hurt or or pain, like an ultimatum. You either do this or you're out. Mm. But how often, I mean, I love the theory and I, I aspire to be in that position, but how often are we forced to make a decision or set a boundary when everything's just fine? Normally, when you're being called to do something like this, it's because I think it comes back to values, to be honest, Mm -hmm. right? When you're wanting to act out of integrity, where you're wanting to, you know, say what you mean, mean when you say and follow through with actions, I mean, that requires boundaries, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And all of these things, it's normally because something has happened that for you, isn't vibrating right or it's not in tune Absolutely. with you, right? Absolutely. And, and with we that only comes... learn the boundaries we need when one's been violated and we feel awful. 
And that comes from, and when that happens, it's discomfort. Yes. Right. And so the actual trigger to say, I might need to do something here generally comes from a place of discomfort. Mm -hmm. So to be able to then climb the ladder and set, so what do you say? So I guess what you're saying is take your time. Don't act in the heat of the moment. Yes. Look at why the reason you need to set the boundary, be clear on that as opposed to a knee jerk reaction, which will be coming from what you're saying before that sort of need. 100%. Yeah. So my one default line, this is the one line that changed my life because this one line bought me time and space. And the line was, I'm feeling overwhelmed, hurt, angry, whatever it is that I'm feeling, which requires self-awareness to understand mm-hmm. our emotions and what that feels like in our body. And I need, so I'm feeling and I need, then I will. So I'm feeling really angry at the moment and I just need some space when I'm feeling better I will come back to you and then we can have Mm. this conversation the the person and and that's on us we must come back if we are executing our right to identify our need and communicate that with the other person it is our responsibility to come back and pick up that conversation again and so this completely changed my life because then I was able to go, I'm feeling really overwhelmed right now. And I just need, I just need some space usually for me. So I'm struggling Mm. to even think of other ideas because usually space is the thing I need when I'm Mm. feeling really overwhelmed or heavy or hurt or whatever space is the thing that I need to be able to process. So, but then I'll say exactly because certainty is really important. So then I'll say, I will come back to you tomorrow or I will come back to you, blah. And if I'm still not ready, if tomorrow comes and I'm still not ready and I can't approach that from a place of love, I'll communicate that. I'll say, look, I know that I said I would come back to you today. I'm still just needing a little bit more time to process. Is it okay if I come back to you on Friday? And the other person sits there and goes, oh, okay, yeah, sure, no worries because they've got some certainty. It's the uncertainty that feels dysregulating. Hmm. Some people have never actually had a boundary set. Some people will sit there and go, the more anxiously attached people will sit there and just go crazy in that time because this is a new relationship dynamic. They don't have Hmm. trust or faith yet that you are actually going to come back and, and follow up, which is why the follow through is so important. And I see this mostly in parenting. When parents will make a threat that's actually more of a threat than a healthy boundary. Um, But then they don't follow through. So there's uncertainty, there's fear because it's a threat as opposed to a healthy boundary based off culture. So in our home, we is a culture. I've created a cultural expectation in our home that we love well, that we are kind, right? But a threat is not about loving culture. A threat is about fear-based control. Mm. So in parenting, the mistakes that I see people make is that they'll use threats to manipulate behaviour, but also there will be a threat or even a healthy boundary, but no follow-through. And the lack of follow-through creates uncertainty in the child, which actually dysregulates them more in the long run. It might in the short term, in the moment, make them go, oh. So if I said, I'm feeling really overwhelmed and I just need some space, and I went and took that space, but the person on the receiving end continued to just relentlessly contact me saying, well, why won't you talk to me? I need to talk to you now. If I allow that behaviour and then passively go, oh, I'm just going to ignore it, that's where the boundary is not being upheld. upheld. So mm-hmm. that's where I need to say, I respect that you need closure. I will give you that closure when I have the capacity to come back to this conversation with a heart posture of love. Right now, I can't be the person I want to be in that conversation and I need you to stop. If you don't stop, I will be blocking you until I am able to show up for you. 
Mm. or I will. So see how there's that upholding of the boundary and follow mm. through with the boundary the whole way through. Absolutely. But even when you're saying it, so like, it's still difficult, right? 100%. It's still hard to be able to Absolutely. be that frank with someone because then they'll want to keep on talking about it. And then they all can but want you, that. And then you're, but you're, you're blocking it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, their dysregulation is theirs because you can't be carrying theirs as well as yours. You are your mm. responsibility. I am my responsibility. And what I've learned, and I'm not perfect at it. I get it wrong. Sometimes I react. Sometimes I don't recognize my needs early enough and have a bit of a blow up and, you know, shout out to my kids. <laughs> Every, <laughs> everyone's going to have yeah. these moments where you can't be perfect all the time. Mm. But when that happens, I will debrief it and self-reflect and go, what, did, what was the cue that I missed? What was mm. the prompting that I missed for me to not intervene and set a healthy boundary but that my nervous system had to get to the point of scream before I heard it. Mm. Because if we don't have the self-awareness of what we're feeling and what's actually really coming up for us, then how can we communicate it with someone else? Healthily or unhealthily. Usually it's it pretty, just keeps going and going and going until it explodes. It's, it's big. This has been, a, I'll probably go say, one of the most challenging um shows to talk about because it's it's hitting me so so real but i'm also really happy that you know we can talk about our own experiences and share that and i think the biggest thing is guys setting boundaries easy to say easy, easy to, to say, say not easy, easy to, say. to do it's it's a it's it's very simple but not easy so yeah. um if you if you're sort of resonating with this and you need to go through it where you know we feel you um, just sort of some of the biggest tips that I've, you know, learned from Ash is, and what we've discussed in this show is generally when you're setting boundaries, you're going to be in some kind of discomfort. Find a time, don't set the boundary in the discomfort straight away. Give yourself time to understand where that's coming from, then set the boundary as yeah. much as you want to just light the place on fire sometimes because Again, apparently you get dopamine and serotonin when you do that. And goodness, oof. we're but all drug addicts in our own that's way. That's it. That's <laughs> it. So, and that's been a great follow up from self awareness. And the next couple of episodes, we're sort of going to be talking about sort of parenting and kids and mm. all of that. So, that's going to be pretty awesome. And yeah. um, can't wait. Pretty, pretty amazing. Is there anything else you wanted to say, Ash, before we wrap things up? The only thing, so my, my three pillars to everything is, first of all, is awareness. Mm. It's so important. If we don't have awareness, we can't set a boundary because we miss the cues. And then education, if we don't know how to set the boundary, if we don't have the words to use, if we don't have the mm. inner resources to be able to do that, that's not a reflection of us. That doesn't make us bad people. It just means we've got something to learn. We've got a skill we need to develop. We've got a muscle we need to, you know, strengthen. And that's cool. So awareness and education are the first two pillars of everything that we do at Remind. And then the last one is transformation because transformation then goes, is there another barrier? Is there an underlying fear that if you set this boundary you are going to be abandoned you are going to be rejected mm. you're not worthy of love whatever that is because we need to process that out if you have an underlying fear that if you set a boundary you're going to be abandoned and feeling abandoned leaves you feeling like you're about to die like that is suffocating in your spirit then you need some processes to be able to process the trauma that's underlying that and so I would just encourage you to t start taking those steps. First of all, take the um, jump over on our socials from this week and also mm -hmm. from last week on the self-awareness on Instagram and Facebook. Have a look at the content. We've got some great questions there to support you in your self-awareness and also some scenarios of what a, um, a 
a scenario with a poor boundary versus a scenario with a healthy boundary and what mm. language we can start to put around that. It'll be really, really helpful. And also uh, our blog. So re-mind.institute forward slash blog. We'll stick it in the show notes and the, the description. The description. Yep. We've got a really detailed blog on this topic as well about how do we actually, what is what is setting a boundary? How do we do it? Where did our lack of boundaries come from? And how can we actually get better at doing it? So lots of resources here to support you guys. You're not on this journey alone. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for tuning in. Share this episode with 10 people that you love. (laughs) Get the word out there because this is the information that I really believe is going to change lives. Absolutely. If 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 you can interact with people in an easier way, then, and imagine the people that you want to interact with, they could set boundaries, healthy boundaries, as well as you. Imagine, Mm. just imagine, it'd be amazing. Yeah, just imagine. Amazing, Ash. Thank you everyone for listening and we'll catch you next week on the Remind Podcast. (laughs) Bye-bye.